Hello everyone, welcome to the first part or part 1A of a series of videos where we will be setting up a hub and spoke network using stub routes. In this first part, we're going to be configuring a layer 3 switch uh, as our hub router because we really don't require any packet filtering on this site router um, that, or the router that will be used for the hub. So we'll use a layer 3, three switch and consider this the head office. First thing we're going to do is connect to the console, have our router or our switch uh, booted up. And when we connect the console, you're going, you should see something like this, where it's at its default configuration. You're at the initial configuration dialog. We don't want to uh, enter the configuration dialog. We want to say no, and we'll configure things manually. As you see, we're at the prompt, the switch prompt. Uh, that's the default name of the switch. And we'll go into exec mode uh, by typing enable. Um, you can type part of uh, the commands and hit enter and generally the commands will be executed or you can hit the tab key to uh, auto complete the command. Once we're in this mode, we're going to, we're going to just, uh, we're going to show we're going to show the running config so we can confirm that in fact there's no IP addresses set up, there's no uh, cryptography uh, configured uh, VLANs and, and so on. So we'll just show the running config. Again, just typing the first part of the commands and hitting tab. If you're unsure what the next command is, you can hit question mark and it will show you what you can um, what, what other uh, command line options you can you can enter? In this case, we just need to show the running config. And as you see, the, the interfaces on the switch we have 24 interfaces. They are not configured. No VLANs. We have the default VLAN that uh, the native VLAN. Also, uh, no routes as well. So this is a default configuration. With this, we'll go into configure mode, which uh, we'll use the terminal, config T. And first thing we want to do is set the host name. As simple as typing host name. And in our case, it's going to be called Kitchener. And we'll use uh, initials and uh, the last four digits of our ID. Hit enter, the host name will change. And the first thing we want to do after that is enable routing on the switch. So allow the, the switch to do IP routing. Again, simple, as simple as typing in the exact command IP routing. Routing is now enabled on the, on the switch. And we want to start to configure the interfaces and we'll list those interfaces. We can use a different command and show the running config. We can simply do show IP int BRI. That will just give us a brief uh, output on the configuration of the adapters. Here we're only going to use adapters or interfaces within the first five or so. And we'll use the odd ones, the ones that are on the top row. So we'll We'll hit Q to quit out of that, so we have that on our screen, and we can reference the the interfaces that we want to set up. First interface will be we'll go into the interface configuration simply by typing in tab to complete auto complete the command, and we'll use a short form for the interface, which will be one zero one, and hit enter. Now, as you see, we're in the interface configuration. We don't want to use this as a switch port. We want to use it as a routing port. So we will set no switch port, hit enter, and then type simply the IP address that we want to enter. And in this case, it's going to be attached to the Kitchener site or directly to the Kitchener workstation. And that IP address range will be the IP address will be the default IP address that the Kitchener workstation will be connected to. Uh, so it will be its default gateway and we'll set 
the IP address as 10.200.1.1 that mask 255.255.255.0 and that is that is set to make sure that the the interface will be initialized we'll run no shutdown and we'll exit that interface the IP address and that mask has been set Next, we'll go to, we can up arrow to the command history and simply change to the interface that we want. In this case, it's going to be 103. And we'll, we'll run again, set it to no switch port so we can use the port uh, for routing. And then set the IP address, which in this case, is going to be connected to the router that we're going to be using for the Guelph network. The IP address for that will be 172, in my case, you will use your assigned IP addresses, will be 172.16.1.1 with a net mask of 255.255.252 or slash 30 because there will only be two devices on this. The other end of this connection will be a direct connection to the Guelph router, which will be on the same network. The IP address will be on the same network, and we'll cover that in an upcoming video. So with that done, we want to, again, make sure that the interface stays initialized. And we'll go to the final interface to set up for the Stratford network. Oops, we'll just up arrow and change that. It's as easy as that. Now we're on the correct interface. And of course we have to set no switch port. Set it up for routing. And the IP address will be 172.16. Dot two dot one with a net mask again a slash thirty net mask five two five two we're only going to have two hosts this interface and the other interface on the other router going to Stratford we have our IP address set we'll run no shutdown again exit the interface configuration. With this complete, we'll now configure static route on our kitchener to both remote site LAN networks, Guelph and Stratford. So to get to the Guelph LAN, uh, which will be 10.200.2.0, we'll need to go through what will be the WAN interface on the Guelph router. So what we'll do is we'll set up the route. So we'll simply uh, under the under configuration, we will run IP route and the network we want to get to, which will be the Guelph LAN network, be 10.200.2.0. So that represents the entire network, all the hosts on that 24-bit network. We'll give it a 24-bit network mask. And the interface that we will be going through to get to that network will be the external interface on the Guelph router, which will have an IP address of 172.16.1.2. So that will be directly connected to, to uh, interface uh, 103 on our, on our switch and routed to that Guelph LAN. That we hit enter, that's the one route. And we do the same thing to get to the Stratford network. And we can just go up here and the Stratford network will be dot three. And the interface that interface, the interface on the Stratford router that will be connected directly to the Kitchener router will be 172.16.2.2. .2. 
And from here, we can show to the show the running config, and you'll see the changes that were made. Here we have our IP addresses for the interfaces. Down here we have our static routes. And that's all we're going to do for, for right now. Next we will configure SSH so that we can access the switch without a need for console, for console access. We want to make sure that we're in config mode. We've already entered exec mode. So we'll config T. Now we're in config mode and we'll set the domain name first of the system that's required in order to set up cryptography um, and allow SSH um, access to the, to the switch. So we'll run IP domain name. Again, we can finish, finish the command by hitting tab and we'll name this domain netsec to dot local and after that we generate uh, an RSA uh, key pair which will provide encryption for our data so what we enter here is crypto key generate RSA in this case we're going to be using a modulus of 1024 bits uh, for our encryption. It'll take a moment to create the hash and then and will show us the version of SSH and confirm that it's been enabled. And next we'll set the virtual teletype terminal and the number of connections that we'll allow. In this case, we'll run line virtual teletype, zero to four connections, which means five connections to zero is the connection. We'll put the console on that uh, momentarily. Next, next, we'll set the transport that's going to be allowed. And in this case, it is going to be the SSH protocol by typing transport input SSH. We'll be using a local login database, and after that we'll need to create a user and a password. So we'll tell it that we're using a local login, login local. We'll set the password to secret 55. That's our default password, which we're all going to use. So the line configure, line config is set. We'll exit the line config. Make sure that we're in configuration mode. And now we'll set the terminal that we're going to use for the physical con console. And so when we do connect with the physical console, we run enable. We're going to get asked a prompt for a password, and that'll be uh, secret 55. So what we'll do here is go into line config console. And we'll use console zero for that, or virtual teletype zero for that. We're going to now set the logging, which will be synchronous. And tell it that the login database, console login database, will be a local user. And we exit config line mode. And we're going to now set our password and username for SSH login. So we'll go username, we'll create username Cisco in this case. The password, of course, will be secret 55. We'll set the password encryption using the service command and password 
encryption and confirm the SSH service is running. We'll do show IP SSH. And that's telling us it's running. So what we'll do now is set the enable password. Enable secret, we'll use secret 55. And then from here, what we'll do is we will log in and confirm everything is working with SSH. So bring up a new session. The IP address that we'll be connecting to is on FA101 of the uh, Cisco 3750 switch. And that IP address is 2.1.1. And as you can see in front of you here, that's the console we're in. We're going to use the SSH protocol. Run that. It's going to ask us to confirm the encryption. And we'll use the name that we fit with Cisco. And the password, as always, is secret55. And then we'll run enable. And password will be secret55. And we're in. We'll go to config T. And we're in. We can exit that. Let's do, let's show running config. Our Ethernet setup. Our routing. And you see we set the information for the domain. And the secret. And so on. Cryptography. Uh, our password, of course, is encrypted. All right, so that'll end this session.